Hello and welcome to my League of Legends roundup for Rumble Stage Day 1 of MSI 2022. I'm going to cover the six games, give you the highlights in case you missed them. You know, how many people might have gotten up to watch PSG and Saigon Buffalo? Probably not many, so I'm going to go over the six games, tell you what happened, give you the highlights um, to the nearest minute in case you want to go back and watch, you know, an outplay or a comeback or a Baron Steel or whatever yourself. Um, we didn't have any Baron Steels today, though. Um... You know, that's kind of the gist of this. Not necessarily for you to be able to read the board. Obviously, I'd like you to be able to read the teams and maybe like the key stats at the bottom. But when it comes to the notes, those are more for my own, you know, use to go over with you than for you to be able to read yourself. So, um, game one, G2, T1. G2 uh, beat T1. To me, this is uh, upset. Um, I didn't expect G2 to beat T1. I didn't expect T1 to lay an egg like they did. They did. Um, G2 had a good day. Um, you know, so that is what it is. Uh, two minutes, T1 actually threw the first punch. They got a 2v2 kill in bot. They used that to take a mountain and get out to a 3.5k gold lead by 11 minutes. However, G2 would crawl back into this game. They take a Hextech Drake. Uh, T1 get a kill top. T1 then take an Ocean. So now T1 are up 2-1 to one in Drakes before 20 minutes. At 20 minutes, it's 4-4 on top. Uh, actually, I knew this was going to happen when I wrote it down. It's a fight, big fight in top that goes 4-4 four four at 20 minutes. Owner with a triple. Um, caps and Broken Blade with doubles each for G2. Um, T1 are now up 6-4, 5K gold at 23 minutes. So even after this fight, T1 has a significant gold lead. Um, 5K at 23 minutes is nothing to slouch. You know, it, it, it's nothing to ignore. Um, T1 then go to Ocean Soul Point, so they are still really cruising. Um, laning phase, nothing really happened. There weren't many big attempts at a gank or a roam or a, or a dive, at least nothing that was committed to. 24 minutes, G2 would turn this game around in the river. 5-2, Flacked with a double. Three minutes later, G2 then win a fight 3-1. Yankos with a double, which gives them Baron. Um, ties up gold. 12-8 now for G2. Yankos is 3-1-6 and six on the Diana. They pulled out Diana Yasuo in this game. Um, G2 then take an Ocean to prevent Soul. Uh, they take their second Baron at 33 minutes. 4-0. Yankos with another double. Gives them a slight gold lead, but more importantly, it gives them the power play. They go to Ocean Soul Point. Uh, G2 then get a couple picks with the Baron. They push their gold lead a little bit farther. And then at 30 Four minutes, they end 2-0 in mid. Final score, 20-8. to um, G2 are 0-2 for 2 on the power play. T1 do not get a power play. Caps ends up being MVP. I only mentioned him once, but his Yasuo was pretty disgusting. Um, not only that, he really limited the power of the Tristana from Gumiushi um, by windwalling the, um, you know, windwalling the charges and the ultimates and things like that. So... It was, a, it was a good game out of G2. G2 played very well. Um, obviously, uh, they go 2-0 today. Spoiler alert for the RNG game later, um, which we'll get to. So, game two, EG and um, RNG. So, RNG dive, bot at six, dive top at six minutes to open this one up. That's a trade of kills. Um, RNG then take an ocean. And laning phase ends at 11 minutes with RNG up 2.5k gold. Um, laning phase... EG don't really attempt any plays. RNG are 0 for 2 on their attempts to make a play. In my opinion, if you trade kills um, in an outnumbered situation, you failed your attempt at a gank, a dive, or a roam, or whatever that you really committed to. Um, I don't summon. Obviously, you know, I guess it's uh, it is a win if you blow a summoner, but we're not getting that technical um in that stat so at 12 minutes rng want to fight in top 2-1 way with a double way played a great game on the Xin Zhao. in this one um rng take an infernal 19 minutes rng want to fight 3-2 in the jungle both top laners trade kills bin and impact with doubles bin ends up being mvp in the mid to late game his gangplank was dominant dealing a ton of damage he ends up being mvp played a great great game um, forcing out the ban of the GP against G2 later today um, because even G2 were afraid of the gangplank. Um, 20 minutes, RNG get a pick. 
RNG go to Mountain Soul Point. And by 21 minutes, their gold lead now is 6K, 7 4 and kill. Xiaohu 2 0 and 500% kill participation on the Twisted Fate. Um, that means their gold lead went from 2.5K to 6K in 10 minutes. EG then get a pick. They get Pryo over the Baron for Vision, and at 23 minutes, they take it. Um, they take the Baron. RNG get there late. They win the fight 2 0 on the turn, but EG has the Baron down 3.5K gold. Um, RNG then two minutes later take Mountain Soul in a fight that goes 2 to 1. Baron's over. RNG are up 11, 6 and kills, 5K gold. RNG take a Baron of their own after getting a kill, 7.5K gold lead at 30 minutes. They win a fight shortly thereafter in the river, 4-1. Gala with a double. Um, there's then a skirmish and bot that goes 2-2. Two to two. Um, 33 minutes, EG get a kill in the river, which leads to some prio. However, they are unable to take Elder. RNG win the fight 4-1 in the river. Bin with a triple. Bin was huge in that fight to secure um, the win, prevent EG from taking Elder and possibly turning the game. Um Final score, 22 to 11. Both teams 0 for 1 on the power play. Um, you know, EG, I didn't like this draft at all. Um, I said multiple times on Twitter. I think I retweeted my own tweet because I just wanted to really drive it in there. The Jin was such a useless pick. I hated the Jin pick from the start, and I don't like the Jin pick still. Um, Danny was non-existent on the Jin. It was useless. I don't really like impact on the Gwen either. Um... I mean, I, I don't like the, the Gwen and the Jin for them. I mean, obviously, Gwen's a power pick, and it's really technically probably good on anybody, but EG just haven't really figured out how to use it against these good teams, and the Jin, I think, is just not a champ Danny's very good at. Um, game three, PSG and Saigon Buffalo. Uh, two teams I have fifth and sixth going into this, and my predictions, obviously, my predictions were already wrong um, when I had G2 losing to T1 and it being flipped. Um, I guess that's kind of the risk of putting records next to who you think is going to finish where because you can always say, oh, well, you know, there's seven games left. I mean, everybody's got eight games left. The records could still end up being, I mean, the order could still end up being the same, but records obviously won't be. But that's the extra mile you go, and I really could care less being off on the um, particular records. It's more so who gets in and who doesn't. I mean, if G2 finish first instead of third and obviously aren't even close to 6-4 and four and go like 8-2 and two or 9-1 and one or whatever or 10-0, or and 0, um, then that's a different story. Um, but as of right now, I'm pretty okay. Um, so PSG Saigon Buffalo. PSG open this up at 5 minutes, uh, getting a kill. Uh, they get a pick, actually. And then at 9 minutes, they go top, get a kill. There's a fight in the river that goes 2-1. to one. PSG take an ocean. Uh, 14 minutes, they outplay a bot dive 2-0. Unified with a double. Unified played a great game. Um, between the bot lanes of PSG and Saigon, um, I expected PSG's bot lane to be able to handle Saigon Buffalo, um, and it did in a big way in this game. I felt like Kai Wing played a fantastic game as well. Um, for this lead that they got, um, Kai Wing honestly was the MVP in the early portion of the game because 14 minutes in, PSG are up 6-1, 4K gold already. Kai Wing is 105. He was the facilitator. He was going top lane. He was getting vision. He was securing things for um, Juhan. Um, so at 14 minutes, they're up 6-1. They're uh, Saigon Buffalo are 0 for 2 on their attempts to make a play. One being that bot dive that they that they flop on and PSG turns 2-0. Um, Saigon Buffalo then end up taking a hex tech at 17 minutes. Uh, PSG win the turn 3-0, which um, gives them more advantage. Saigon Buffalo get a pick. PSG win a fight in mid 1-0. 20 minutes are up 7.5k gold, 10 to 2 in kills. So the gold lead has almost doubled in 6 minutes. PSG take a Baron at 21 minutes, winning a fight 5-1. Unified with a triple, Juhan with a double. That gives them a 10K gold lead. So they are rolling at 21 minutes. And then things get kind of sloppy out of PSG, which I would be concerned about. Um, this is the thing with Saigon Buffalo. They did beat DFM from a losing position twice. Um, Saigon Buffalo do not give up. They will create a chaotic mess to try and keep up and get back in games. And sometimes it works out. So PSG take a cloud with this Baron. There's a skirmish at the S uh, Saigon base at 23 minutes. It goes one to one. 
There's a reset, PSG up 16-4 in kills, Unified 8-0-4 on the Zaya, 50% of the kills for the team. Uh, PSG go to Cloud Soul Point, 29 minutes, Saigon Buffalo win a fight in the river, 2-0, Froggy with a double. Froggy, in my opinion, was the MVP for Saigon Buffalo in this game. His Vigar was a great counter to the Ari. I hope other teams pay attention to that. I mean, everyone's picking different things, the Zoe, the LeBlanc, the Vex, but I honestly think the Vigar is an underutilized pick. Um, Saigon take a cloud after winning this fight at 34 minutes they take a Baron of their own winning a fight 5-2 in mid Hazmid, Shogun and Unified all with doubles this cuts the gold deficit to 4k so now between 21 minutes and 34 minutes Saigon Buffalo crawled back into this game get a Baron gold deficit is from 10k now to 4k um, PSG are up 18-11 in kills after the Baron subsides and their gold lead's only 1.5k so it's gone by this point in the game, 1.5K is nothing. Um, in the game, it's anyone's game, which is why I don't have Kai Wing as MVP, because Kai Wing got them the lead, but then they blew the lead. Um, Unified's 10, 2, and 4. Froggy, 5, 1, and 4. Um, 38 minutes, PSG get a pick. Leads to Pryo over the cloud. They take the soul, win a fight 3-0. Um, sorry, actually, I misread that. They get a pick. They get Pryo over the soul. They take the soul because Saigon Buffalo get a pick elsewhere. Um, 39 minutes. PSG want to fight 5-1 in top to end. Unified and Hanabi with doubles. Final score, 25-13. Both teams 0-1 on the power play. Unified played a great game. Kai Wing played a great game. Um, you know, if you shut down the Saigon Buffalo bot lane, you will have um, a chance to win. I mean, I, I mean, not even a chance to win. I think you will win. Um Everything goes through bot with Saigon Buffalo, um, so eliminating that pressure was huge. Uh, multiple teams were using Tristana Rel today. Um, obviously, in scrims, it's become a thing. Um, Tristana Rel is a thing from the past that we are seeing again. Um, we saw it multiple times. I don't really like it all that much. I don't like the Rel. Um, at times, it's okay, but especially in the case of T1, I feel like the Rel was a bad pick. Um, it was not very impactful i thought carrier honestly between both games didn't play all that well um which we'll get to um but nevertheless that is the first board of today's games now on to board number two okay now for board number two g2 excuse me g2 rng um so rng play an aggressive early game which has mixed results and g2 once again scale and uh, win the game. So actually something I noticed. Jeez my nose itches. Once I, something I've noticed. In um, these games. Is that there, there are a lot of longer games. These teams are closer than they were in group stage obviously. And most games are lasting 35 minutes or so. Um, scaling is becoming a thing. Um, the meta is slowly shifting to a more scaling and slower paced meta. Um, 7 minutes RNG gank top to open this one up. Take an ocean at nine minutes. G2 end up outplaying a bot dive caps with a double. Um, 11 minutes. G2 get a pick. RNG then dive top. And at 13 minutes, the game is pretty much anyone's. It's four to four in kills. It's close. RNG more active. Two for three on their attempts to make a play. And um, G2 not really attempting much of anything. Um, 15 minutes. G2 take a cloud, winning a fight 2 0. They then win a fight in the river 2 1. Flacked with a double. Flacked. This game for me for Flacked um, was a um, coming out party, in my opinion. I thought Flacked maybe played his best game I've seen in a very long time out of him. Um, there were flashes during spring, but as far as MSI is concerned, this was by far his best game. I thought he played very aggressive. He played confidently. I am not about the scaling 80 carry thought process of oh well we'll just play for late game and do whatever if you are only that way how good really are you compared to everybody else you're just dealing damage um if you're aggressive you're confident you're making plays happen in this game flack it did that on the case saw which actually impressed me he ends up being mvp um 18 minutes after flack it gets a double kill way would solo kill him um 20 minutes g2 take a mountain rng get a pick so now G2 are up 8-7, 2K gold, caps is 3-0 and 4 as of 21 minutes. Um, that leads to Pry over the Baron. They take it, 2.5K gold lead. Um, G2 then win a fight at 23 minutes with the Baron, 2-1. Um, they're able to take down some turrets, get
get some prio in lane and go up to 5k at 23 minutes 5k is, is a decent gold lead that leads to mountain soul point um 26 minutes bin would soul kill broken blade in the side lane that's traded off um three minutes later rng take the mountain in a trade of kills one for one 31 minutes a big fight that really decided this game g2 win for one yankos with a double that gives them a 7k gold lead rng are able to force a reset at 34 minutes getting a kill in mid so after the barons over g2 are up 8k flack it is 7 2 and 6 g2 are up 16 to um 11 so 13 out of 16 kill participation like i said flack had played an aggressive game he got his nose in there he made things happen and um i was impressed by his play today because that's the sort of play that i really you know i, I value in a player um and then at 35 minutes g2 won a fight in the river 5-2 flacked with another double to end it final score 21 14 g2 are 0 for 2 on the power play um rng don't get any uh you know this game um you know g2 won rng just rng struggled today um in, in this game Next one, Saigon Buffalo and EG. Um, EG, I thought, adjusted well. This is a good sign. This is the first time I have something positive to say about EG in this um, MSI. I mean, maybe I said, I probably said nice things about them last week against Order, but um, push comes to shove, I wasn't impressed by them beating Order. Um, I'm more impressed by how do you do against the top teams. Um, even Saigon Buffalo, who moved on, the reason why I'm happy that they um, beat Saigon Buffalo, um, the Jackson top was a nice pick. They didn't go with the Gwen. They went with Jax. Nice. They went with Ezreal instead of Jin. And I, and I said earlier on in um, MSI, I said, you know, the Ezreal, they were struggling on in G, with uh, against G2. I don't want them picking the Ezreal anymore. Obviously, Danny is struggling on it. Well, over the past week, hopefully Danny has, I mean, he showed confidence on the pick. He looked composed. He hit a lot of his skill shots. His ultimates were um, hitting multiple targets. Um, you know, I think he played a lot better on the Ezreal in this one than he did against G2 in round one. Um, and it's simply just hitting your skill shots. Like, sure, people dodge your skill shots, but, like, the, the hit rate was much, much higher in this one. So, um... EG opened it up, getting a 2v2 kill at three minutes under their own turret. Uh, you know, um... So, Cheyenne Buffalo kind of forced the issue, and EG say, fine, well, we're going to get a kill before you do, and they do. They get a 2v2 kill, and then um, B&J cleans up one... B&J clean, tries to clean it up, in which case EG end up turning it on its head, winning overall 2-1. Um, eight minutes, EG won a fight in the river 4-2, inspired in B&J with doubles. 11 minutes, Saigon Buffalo get a kill in top lane. That leads to Pryo over... Uh, Drake in bot after a reset they take ocean um, 13 minutes however Baron um, not Baron geez 13 minutes um, laning phase ends EG up 7 5 2k gold Danny 1 1 and 5 on the um, Ezreal and Bean J 4 1 and 1 on the Wukong during laning phase both teams were active but were not fruitful in their attempts both 0 for 3 on their attempts to make a play gank dive roam thing of that nature um, 15 minutes, there's a fight in bot that goes 2-2. Hosmid with a double. Once again, I said this last week, Hosmid is the player that keeps showing up for Saigon Buffalo in these team fights. Uh, multiple, um, you know, multiple kills. Um, and especially in their losing efforts. And on the Gwen, he will find ways to get kills and even out fights. Um, EG take a mountain. 20 minutes, EG win a fight in the river 4-3. Inspired with a triple. This makes Inspired MVP, in my opinion. This fight was huge. His Viego was huge in this fight. This turned the game, and EG didn't look back after this. Um, they're up 13-10, 3.5k gold, inspired 6-1-3. and three. Um, 22 minutes, EG get a pick, take a Hextech. 25 minutes, they get two kills in the jungle. Take a Baron, up 6.5k gold. And then they would end with the Baron 4-1 and bot, inspired with another triple. Final score, 20-11. So EG turning it around, looking good. Um, obviously against Saigon Buffalo, I'm not putting... A lot of stock in who it's against. I'm putting stock in the fact that Danny looked more comfortable on Ezreal. And I felt like the Jax was a nice change in top over the Gwen. Um, last game, PSG and T1. Um, T1 
We're not messing around in this one after losing game one. I did feel like Caria um, struggled. Um, he wasn't all that impactful. That was kind of the way the game went. Zayas ends up being MVP because his Aurelia would start this game off at, I believe, three minutes with a solo kill on Hanabi, which is true. At three minutes, Zayas solo kills Hanabi to set the tone. And um, it was the Zayas show in this one. Um, so... T1 will attempt two dives in the early game, five and seven minutes in top and bot, and um, in my opinion, trade one for one in both. Um, you could argue that some are okay because, you know, wave management and, and loss of waves and how the gold all works out. Sure, they win it, but um, it's closer than they would have liked. Um, so they are 0 for 3 in the end during laning phase in their attempts to make a play. Um, there's a reset. PSG take a cloud. 13 minutes, PSG get a 2v2 kill of their own. That leads to another reset where T1 take a Hextech Drake. So now there's a trade of Drakes before 16 minutes. The kills are 3 to 3. T1 is a 2.5k gold lead when laning phase ends. Um, 18 minutes where the game's decided, in my opinion. Um, T1 win a fight 5 2 in mid. Zayas with a triple. This is where he solidifies his MVP status for the game. This turned the game, and T1 wouldn't look back. So. They get the triple, PSG get a pick, T1 are up 8-6, 6.5k six, six gold at 20 minutes. The gold lead has more than doubled between 16 and 20 minutes. T1 take a mountain, Faker soul kills Hanabi in the side lane at 20 minutes. That gets traded out one for one. 24 minutes, T1 take a Baron, 9k gold lead. They go to Mountain Soul Point with the Baron, they get a pick with the Baron. Um, game slows way down. Um, we don't get a lot of action in this window of time. Um, between 24, I mean, shoot, between 20 and 30 minutes, we had one kill. 20 and 30 minutes, we had one kill, and that was the T1 pick. Uh, they took the Baron uncontested. They took Mountain, um, without having to draw blood. Um, and then at 30 minutes, PSG get a pick. Um, however, T1 take the Baron. They say, fine, well, we're going to take another Baron. They're up, excuse me, 11k gold. And then, um, a minute later, they get a kill. They take Mountain Soul, and then they end with Baron and Mountain Soul at 32 minutes. Um, 5-0, Faker and Zayas with doubles in the base of PSG. Final score, 15-9 kills. A lot closer than what the game would indicate. Um, a lot of trades of kills, one for one, where T1 would slightly win and be able to push those leads into gold leads and um, win the game that way. So, uh, yeah, Zayas ends up being MVP, played a great game. Um, in my opinion, T1 really turned it around in game. In this one, um, compared to the G2 game, you know, G2 and even the caster said this afterwards, um, G2 has a better grasp on the meta. At least they found something that works for them. Um, the Diana, the Yasuo, um, Zoe, Wukong, um, they are finding things that work for them, and it's up to everybody else to catch up and figure out what works for them. Um, I like that EG maybe found out that getting rid of the Gwen and the Jin might help them. Um, T1, I mean, Faker said after playing TF in the first game of this whole thing that he wishes he, I mean, the team didn't, he didn't say he wishes, but the team, the team has to pick picks based on the fact that it's a 35 ping. Um, you have to pick easier to execute comps. Galio Camille, Diana Yasuo, things that are more wombo combo, easy to execute, um, you know, hard CC, things like that. Those are the type of compositions that need to be played. The fancy stuff is not going to work at this MSI. Um, when push comes to shove, when you're against a team of even stature. So we'll see how that goes. Comment down below. If you have an opinion of your own, how do you think these games went? How do you think it's going to go in the future? Um, you know, like the video if you like it, subscribe to the channel. I do daily League of Legends content. I'm doing League of Legends roundups every day throughout MSI um, videos like this. I am thinking of starting my LPL previews today um, because I don't know when the LPL is going to officially start. I can't find a start date. Um, so I have to preview 17 teams. And I mean, I'm going to get a lot of the videos done before um, I even release the first one. Well, I'll release the first one hopefully today, but I plan on getting quite a few videos done um, in the next few days so they're stockpiled um, so we can prepare for the LPL day one as well as the LCK, LEC, LCS. Um, I think I have like 51 videos written down 
to do. So uh, stay tuned for that sort of stuff if you like the four major regions. And uh, I hope to come back for more content.